What's up guys, Kevin Jones here. Thanks for coming to my talk on securing your containerized applications with Nginx. I am a product manager working for Nginx under F5 Networks, and today I wanna to talk to you about how you can use Nginx to sit and protect your applications that are running in Docker. So, let's get going. So again, thank you everyone for coming to my talk on securing your containerized applications with Nginx. I wanna get started immediately here and just talk to you guys a little bit what my goal is today. I wanna to talk to you guys about three main things. One, the benefit of using Nginx or any reverse proxy for security. Particularly when you're using TLS for Nginx, what are the best practices for using TLS configuration on your Nginx server? And then when I am running Nginx in Docker, how should I configure it and what is the best methods for doing that? And then I also wanna leave some time for Q&A at the end. If you're watching this live halfway through my talk, we will be taking a quick break to raffle off two exclusive swag packs. And this will include customized Nginx sneakers, a pair of socks, a t-shirt, and a Yeti Rambler. So please check the chat box when I make that announcement to see if you've won. If you do win, we will reach out to you directly to collect your information. So first, what are the benefits of reverse proxy? Well, there's a lot of things that a reverse proxy can help with, but I wanna focus on three main things today. First is HTTP security and facade routing. Second is being able to offload your TLS connections. Third, I wanna talk about how you can offload authentication and authorization using your reverse proxy. So again, HTTP security is definitely one of the most important things that you can think about when you're building an application. Now, luckily with Nginx or with any reverse proxy, a lot of the hard work has already been completed. A reverse proxy can usually help with restricting access to specific URLs that you perhaps don't want to be able to accessible to certain types of users or to certain areas of your application. You also may want to intercept response headers that come from an upstream server this might be a situation where you have an application server that is giving out some kind of header that may provide information to a hacker or some kind of malicious user that could exploit that and possibly hack your application. Or perhaps you just want to change or manipulate those headers so that your clients have a different experience than what your application is currently providing. Perhaps you want to control the type of methods that are being used. Maybe for certain users you want to allow certain methods and for certain virtual servers you want to disallow certain methods completely. Your reverse proxy can help you do that. It can also help with domain level access. So what domains or what subdomains can be accessed and by who. It also allows you to do things like facade routing, which where you have a layer of facade URLs that the client has publicly available to see and the backend applications that are running in microservices can have their own URLs that are completely independent of the reverse proxy. You can also rewrite URLs for backwards compatibility in a situation where you maybe want to fix some type of broken URI or perhaps you want to try to fix some kind of SEO issue. And then you can also do things like versioning control and A-B testing of your application by being able to give special experiences for special clients. So let's talk about how you might deploy Nginx. So here we have a Docker framework that we have sitting, and this could be the same server, this could be different servers, but we have a separate instance of a reverse proxy running on Linux independently outside of Docker. And here you might have two domain names, in this case, api.example.com on port 80 with three different URIs. And then we have another domain which is partner.example.com, which is a completely different virtual server on the same port, but has its own unique URI. The benefit here is that you can spin up your services in Docker. So here we have a login service that has a completely different URI on its upstream and a completely different port, along with an inventory service and also with that partner API service. And when a client comes through and wants to make simple Git requests to your API, on the login or the inventory screen, they can do that with no problem. They have complete access. And partners that want to access the partner API can do certain methods based on some kind of authentication like an API key or a JSON web token or other some type of authentication flow. 
and then any kind of bad or malicious users may want to make put commands where they shouldn't or access certain URIs that should not be accessible. And this is where reverse proxy can protect those URIs and protect those methods being used on the URIs. So how does that equate to Nginx? Well, we have what's called a server name configuration, which allows Nginx to route requests based on the host header that's passed at the time of the request. We have a listen directive, which allows you to specify what kind of ports are available to that client to be able to connect on. We have a location directive, which uses regular expressions and can route the client's URI or request URI to a certain application using uh, proxy pass and uh, upstreams, which I'll get to in a second. And you can also limit the type of methods that are being used using the limit accept functionality. And then again, as I mentioned before, you can use either proxy pass and or upstream to proxy those connections to what we call an upstream server or a backend server. And we can also use the map and the if statement to determine more advanced use cases where a client is coming through with a specific API key or a specific JSON web token field and make decisions on what kind of authorization that they have access to to be able to access those APIs. Next, I want to talk about TLS. So from a security aspect, TLS is one of the first things that should be enabled to protect your applications and the clients using it. It basically instills trust in the users of that application, and at a very high level, it is fairly easily deployed, especially with the use of reverse proxy. But we've all gone on to SSL Labs and run a scan on our application server or our web server and seen some bad results. And so a little bit later, I want to talk to you about how you can increase those and improve those results. But first, there's a lot of complexities when you decide that you want to enable TLS that can be somewhat confusing especially when you're trying to just focus on designing your application. The first is the ability to do SSL or TLS protocols that backwards compatibility or users may need to access. So how do you decide what TLS protocols to support and how do you configure those in your application? You also may want to decide to use certain ciphers over others. You also may want to know if you want to support SSL sessions or SSL tickets. And then how are you going to manage the certificates and keys? And do you want to enable OCSP stapling? And what kind of performance hit will you see when you're enabling TLS? And how do you monitor vulnerabilities for any OpenSSL or TLS issues? And how do you do patching cycles or patching life cycles? So this can get complicated when you do start to enable TLS. Using a reverse proxy can help with that. Uh, we imagine the same application framework that we have before where we have our three services running in Docker, and then we have our two virtual servers. You may use something like Let's Encrypt, which is a certificate authority, which allows you to issue certificates and keys for your application or your web servers. And those typically can be pulled down using a cert bot, um, usually, very, usually over a cron process or some kind of batch method. And it can update and pull those certs and keys and place them on disk or in memory, depending on what your security requirements are. And then if you're using Nginx, you can also tell Nginx to load those certificates and keys from disk on demand, which is what is called lazy loading certificates. And this is a really unique use case of Nginx where it can just constantly pull those certificates and key in as needed. And this is useful if you have a lot of virtual servers on your application or on your web server. And then if you're using Nginx Plus, your certificates and keys can be stored in an Nginx Plus key value stored database, which is basically an in-memory database. Next, I wanna talk about authentication and authorization. In most cases, a properly equipped reverse proxy can do a lot of functionality when it comes to authentication and authorization. It should be able to offload credential validation at that layer, so being able to handle all of that validation of the credentials, being able to intercept any unauthenticated requests and either drop those or redirect the user to another web page. It also should support integration with some type of IDP or other authentic authentication flow like an OIDC. And it should support multi-factor requirements. So being able to require that that client has multiple ways to authenticate against your application. 
And once that client is validated, authorization should be able to provide policy enforcement on what specific HTTP access that client has. So if we go back again to our same example with our services running in Docker and a Nginx reverse proxy, Nginx can actually load in a JSON web key file, which is basically a secret file uh, loaded in JSON format. And you can have a client take a header and a payload, payload and sign that using a secret and pass that in the form of a JSON web token. And this is passed in the form of an authorization header. You can see here that it is a three part string. So it's uh, three strings of encoded text uh, with the header dot payload dot signature. And the nice thing about Nginx is Nginx can take that signature, validate that it was signed properly, and then it can decode that string of the header and the payload into a JSON structure and build variables for the contents of all of the keys and the values in that token. And so what this allows you to do is use Nginx to do authentication and authorization. All right, let's take a quick break and see who's won the raffle. Please look in the chat window at this time and see if you've won. Next, I want to talk about the best practices for configuring TLS. So TLS, as we've talked about before, can be somewhat complex. And if you've ever set up a web server or a virtual server and then run a test with SSL labs, you may have gotten a, gotten a rating something like this. So in this case, I ran and set up a server running Nginx version 1.17.9 and open SSL 1.02G. And I kept all of the default settings and I simply just added the SSL certificate and the key to the configuration. And then I ran the test and I received the score. And so there's definitely some room for improvement here. Uh, so how exactly do we fix that configuration with Nginx? So here we have a virtual server listening on port 443 over HTTPS. And we've already configured the proper certificate and key but we can configure some additional key directives to optimize the security of that application. So first you can see that we have a virtual server listening on port 443, and it is the default server listening over SSL, and it has a server name to be able to identify requests that come through with example.com as the host header. And then we have the certificate and the key loading in from a certain path on disk. And then we can use SSL protocols to tell Nginx to only allow specific TLS protocols to be used when accepting TLS. In this case, we're limiting it to only TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3. We can also enable SSL prefer server ciphers to on. And what this will do is it will specify that the server ciphers should be preferred over client ciphers. This way, Nginx will always pick the most secure one that it has available to it. We can also specify for those SSL ciphers on exactly what cipher suites can be used during the TLS handshake. And in our case here, we tell Nginx to only use ciphers that support perfect forward secrecy, which are cipher suites that use an ephemeral port of the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. We can also specify a file with Diffie-Hellman parameters for those ciphers. And this should be generated, and I'm gonna explain exactly how you do that on the next slide. 
Uh, by default, no parameters are set and therefore no DHE ciphers will actually be used. So it's very important that you do generate the DH parameters and that you do specify it in the Nginx configuration. And lastly, we can specify the curve, which is going to help with performance. And this is the curve that is used for elliptical curve Diffie-Hellman ephemeral ciphers. So in order to generate a stronger DH parameters file. Uh, it's going to take a while and you're going to use the open SSL command. So you can see here we run open SSL DH param and then dash out and specify where we want to save that file to. And we can also specify the bit length. So for highest security, it's definitely recommended to use a bit length of 4096. And again, this will take a while. Uh, I think I did it earlier and it took about three or four minutes on a two core, eight gigabyte server. So again, it will take a little while, so just be patient there. So testing again, we can see that we're able to achieve an overall rating of A, but we can definitely do better than that. And there's one additional tweak that we can do that really helps, and that is enabling HTTP strict transport security. And what this does is it informs the browser to always interact with your site over HTTPS. This will protect your site against various attacks such as downgrade attacks and possible cookie hijacking. So in order to do this, what we do is we use the add header directive. This is a feature of Nginx which allows you to add a response header with a special value and a special name. So here we add a header called strict-transport-security we give it a max age that is very high. I think this is a little bit over a year, something like that. And then we also tell it to include any subdomains so that any domains for that application are going to require to be talked over STS. And then we're gonna tell that to always go into effect. Now keep in mind, if you do enable STS, that all of your endpoints for that application are going to need to be HTTPS. And this will also protect your site against various attacks such as HTTPS downgrade attacks and possible cookie hijacking where you may have a cookie that is not secured over HTTPS. So lastly, we were able to rescan and you can see here that we got an A+. The only way that we can improve this any further is by using a higher key. So in my case, I used a 2048 bit key length. If you were to use a 4096 key length, for your SSL key, uh, you may get a higher score here, uh, but this is about the best you can get. Uh, and in our case, we used a Let's Encrypt, and so that was our limitation. Next, I wanna talk about how you would deploy Nginx on Docker. So if we think about it before, we've been talking about using Nginx to sit in front of your Dockerized applications and act as a reverse proxy. And there's no reason why Nginx can't actually run in Docker. In fact, Nginx, as a image is about three megabytes in size, and the smallest Docker container that is available is about 34 megabytes in size. And so therefore, it is a very good fit to run Nginx as a service in your Docker environment. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to use Docker Compose. And I wanna share with you guys a Docker Compose YAML file here. And you can see that we're configuring a few different things. We have two different applications, one is Nginx and one is login, and that is an application server that is basically running uh, Go. And you can see that we are building Nginx and naming it Nginx, and we're telling it to always restart, which is very useful in case that application does crash or Nginx crashes. And we're also saying to have a link to the login service. And what this will do is it will link those services together so that they are accessible to each other. You'll notice that on your application server, we're using the expose directive, which expose will only allow them to access the application from a linked service. And then on the Nginx configuration, we're using ports, which is basically used to be able to map ports from inside the container to the outside world. So in this case, Nginx is running on 80 inside the container and also mapping to 80 outside the container. And we can also see here that we're able to mount the Docker volume, which is the Nginx configuration file called server.conf, which is very useful so that you can manage the Nginx configuration outside of the Docker container as a volume. 
And then for the Nginx configuration, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we use the proxy pass directive to configure Nginx to resolve the embedded Docker DNS server or DNS host name. And this will support any scaling that you do of your services while using Docker Compose. And what will happen here is if a request comes through to this virtual server and Nginx needs to proxy that to slash login, it will make a DNS request to determine what containers are available and send that application request to that container on the upstream that is available. Another option is deploying Nginx in a sidecar proxy. And we can imagine we have the same three applications that we've been talking about today, but let's say that they all have their own unique container and instead of listening, listening on the Docker network, they're actually listening on localhost inside the container. So what you can do is you can deploy Nginx as a sidecar proxy, which provides the ability to optimize TLS, standardize on HTTP protocol behavior, and offload any functionality that is already designed into Nginx without having to develop that into your application. So this would be some of the use cases around TLS offloading, HTTP authorization and authentication, any kind of reverse proxy functionality or rules that you want to configure can be done with Nginx and these can be standardized across all of your services. So login service and inventory service can be focusing on the application code and the application features and let Nginx handle all of the HTTP configuration and TLS offloading and authentication and authorization. And from a configuration standpoint, that's very easy to do. What you can do here is use the proxy pass directive, but in this case, we're gonna point the proxy pass directly at the localhost IP address and the port that the application is listening on inside the container. So in this case, 5001. And then we don't even have to expose that as a IP that's available in Docker. It's only gonna be available inside the container. So thank you everyone for coming to watch. I really appreciate it. Um, as a special thank you, we're gonna give you guys a special discount code for our swag store. The URL is swag-nginx.com and the code is dockercon30. And this is gonna give you 30% off the swag store. So if you guys have anything you guys want to get off of there, please use that code uh, to give that, get that discount. And the code expires on June 28th. So please do that before June 28th. And if you do have any questions, I'll go ahead and take those now.